Good evening, everyone. Happy Epiphany po, and I hope that uh, we are all well, and that we are all excited to uh, begin our uh, study of the Book of Common Prayer. But before we proceed, I would like to apologize for the past few months. I was not really given much time to read and prepare for the lesson. Although I've been teaching this uh, course for uh, the past several years, but of course, iba pa rin yung uh, to do updates, uh, reading updates, and uh, to uh, to read more books. And iba na tayo ngayon because it's not in person, but it is uh, online. So I have to read and prepare the slides. And uh, the last semester was really crazy. I was given three. Um, Christian education uh, schedule in the uh, college department so it was really a hectic one but I am glad that uh, the past few days uh, I was given the the chance to read and reorganize our our lesson so before we continue uh, may I invite you all to uh, for the uh, prayer we of course uh, pray from the Book of Common Prayer we pray the Catholic of protection and the Kalik for um, for those who are resting tonight. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessing of the day that is past, and humbly ask you for your protection through this night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours, through him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shell the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is our um, first uh, lecture together um, as regard the Book of Common Prayer. I am recording at home, so uh, please bear with me with the noise outside. Mas malakas po kasi yung internet dito sa bahay kisa dun sa, sa office. So uh, please bear with the, the noise. And uh, I hope that uh, my recording is clear. Okay, so uh, there was this question from Father Tabuoy why uh, the Book of Common Prayer was separated from uh, the under the the liturgy as introduction to the lit, uh, liturgy. Originally, yes, it is part of the uh, the introduction to the liturgy. But then uh, there was a time when uh, Bishop Pacha was. Uh, commenting on the Book of Common Prayer, the result of the uh, canonical exam, I mean. So Bishop Jewel was the chaplain of the Board of Examining Chaplains. The Board of Examining Chaplains are uh, clergy. Uh, this is the board who is conducting the board exam. I mean the uh, <laughs> the board exam. It's a board exam for clergy in a way. It's the, the what we call the canonical exam uh, that is required for all uh, seminary graduates and uh, of course to you if you are uh, interested to take the canonical exam so bishop joel pachao was the uh, the bishop chaplain of these chaplains of this clergy who are conducting the canonical exam uh, sabi po ni bishop joel um every year he observed now that seminary graduates are not actually familiar with the content in theology of the book on book of common prayer so when we were discussing and reviewing the uh, the programs that we are offering here at the college in our uh, theological studies he suggested to me that i will revise the uh, the subjects to 
cater to the needs of these uh, lay people like you who are interested to uh, be taking the canonical exam. Sabi po niya, um, please uh, separate the uh, study of the Book of Common Prayer from the liturgy. So in other words, maging independent siya as a, as a course. Hindi na siya kasama doon sa uh, study of the liturgy, the Anglican liturgy, uh, the subject that you are taking from Father Tabuoy. So because the bishop suggested that this course should focus really on the historical development of the Book of Common Prayer, uh, ano ba yung history ng Book of Common Prayer, ano yung content, and uh, the other practical uh, guides that we need to uh, to know so that we can use the Book of Common Prayer um, properly. At sabi niya, as ano nga uh, ang likan tayo, no, saan tayo nga amo, di jay uh, content, kan theology, kan history, the Book of Common Prayer. So uh, do that in the... Uh, uh, in your lay training program in the college so yes I have to uh, to do that because I find the wisdom and the comment of the bishop totoo po naman yun because at the heart of the uh, of Anglicanism today ano bang meron dyan sa Anglicanism and we'll learn later that um, the book of common prayer uh, if you if you are not British, if you are not English, if we don't live in England, then of course the Book of Common Prayer is our link to that rich history of Anglicanism. And the Book of Common Prayer actually breathes what we believe as Anglicans, regardless of where we are from uh, around the Anglican Communion, from, uh, from Asia, Africa, or in the Americas. So yes. Um, the study of the Book of Common Prayer became an independent subject um, coming from the uh, usual liturgy. Pero na naalala ko naman sa seminary during uh, our time in the early 90s, um, the Reverend um, Padre Laos was our uh, professor at the time and actually we devoted our time to the study of the sacraments in the Book of Common Prayer. So I remember that Book of Common Prayer was really a separate subject from the, uh, from the liturgy. So I think uh, we are uh, on target. So um, let me uh, discuss with you what is the focus uh, of the study of the Book of Common Prayer. So as enumerated in the slides and as suggested by, the, uh, by our good bishop, uh, Joel Pachau. So we start from uh, uh, tracing the historical development of the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, tonight we'll start with Thomas Cranmer, but uh, on our lecture two, we will be uh, mag side trip muna tayo sa medieval uh, history before we proceed and continue with Queen Elizabeth I uh, during the English Reformation. So, medyo ngayong gabi, we'll uh, talk about Thomas Cranmer and then later on, uh, on ja January 18, we have to uh, go back to uh, how was uh, worship during the medieval uh, period so that we'll appreciate more when we come to the Elizabethanian settlement when we continue with the English Reformation. So, that's it. So, the focus of the study is simply the historical development of the Book of Common Prayer. And second is the content in theology of the Book of Common Prayer. Or, of course, when we speak of uh, theology, it is the theology of Thomas Cranmer. Uh, after all, he, he was the architect of the Book of Common Prayer. And third is uh, we are going to look at the Episcopal Church in the Philippines first uh, edition of our Book of Common Prayer, yung um, 2015 edition natin. So I hope that by February, we'll be focusing on uh, a detailed study of what is really the content of the um, ECP Book of Common Prayer, which of course when we speak of the ECP Book of Common Prayer, um, what we are familiar Kasi hindi naman marami sa atin ginagamit na yung uh, 2015. There are still a lot of uh, parishes who are still using the uh, 1979 Book of Common Prayer. And that is the Ikusa 
or the American prayer book. So I hope that uh, we have uh, time to compare because yun naman ang mother, mother book natin yung uh, ikusa or yung American Book of Common Prayer. Ano ang uh, kinupi natin doon at ano yung unique na dinagdag natin sa ating sariling uh, Book of Common Prayer. So that would be the end of the uh, of the course. So we start muna sa development uh, kay Thomas Cranmer doon sa English Reformation. Ano yung kanyang theology And of course, we will look at the uh, our very own uh, uh, Book of Common Prayer. So, course requirement, before we proceed to the other uh, uh, part of this evening's uh, talk, I would like to discuss with you. And if you have comments, please uh, comment na lang po doon sa atin, uh, ating Facebook page. Yung, kung meron tayong comment ngayon, or you can... Uh, ask directly on my messenger account and uh, for as long as uh, I'm not very busy I would be responding to you immediately if you have uh, questions so first uh, the first requirement uh, in this course obviously you need to have a copy of the 1979 Book of Common Prayer and of course uh, kung po pwede lahat tayo meron tayong copy doon sa Uh, 2015 ECP Book of Common Prayer. So at least you have at least two Book of Common Prayer with you, the 1979, that's the American Prayer Book, and the 2015 um, ECP Book of Common Prayer. Another requirement would be um, the actual demonstration or the actual leading of the morning and evening prayer. So kung meron tayong chance to come together in person yung ating uh, class, Um, we will be having our class doon sana sa It's a Easy Chapel. So, uh, I can um, i-demo ko muna, just in case, doon sa hindi pa nagtatry mag-lead ng morning at saka evening prayer, uh, how to do that, and then kayo na yung gagawa because uh, ang isang objective natin dito sa course na to is you can, uh, is to provide you confidence so that you can lead the uh, at least morning and evening prayer you can help your priest or your pastor or your deacon in your own parishes uh, kung wala especially those times na talagang uh, wala kayong deacon or graduate intern man lang or priest at kayo lang yung andon at least uh, alam nyo kung paano ilid yung uh, morning or yung evening prayer okay we speak of formative assessment so obviously I'm not uh, giving you a written exam but purely on the uh, yun nga uh, yung sa skills development kung uh, how do you lead uh, the morning and evening prayer so first under formative assessment ang deadline pala nito is february 28 so take note of that class february 28 don po yung last uh, um account, uh, the last day for you to submit the requirement So one is you conduct a one hour lay training course on the Book of Common Prayer. It's up to you to select which organization you, you would like to uh, conduct your uh, training. Uh, our goal here is to inform them. So if you choose the ECW or SCEP or the uh, Brotherhood of St. Andrew or a group of Sunday school kids or your group of Episcopalian friends, so pwede mga friends mo rin or your family who are less informed about the Book of Common Prayer. So, you should be accomplishing that uh, at the end of, uh, or at least uh, mid-February. Kasi parang mid-term assessment po natin yan. So, I will make a form. Uh, hindi naman siya evaluation form, parang uh, assessment form that your group would be, um, parang if you fill up nila for you. So, one of the questions would be, how was it conducted? Okay, so mga ganon yung lalabas doon sa assessment form. Um, at for example, parang directly sila din yung mag ano, grade sa ano ninyo, sa lecture or doon sa paglilid ng morning tsaka evening prayer. So that yung grado ka na kayo, uh, iti ikas tayo nga mga aramid, iti na ito yung requirement. So again, ulit, uh, agpili kayo ti grupo nga kaya't yung nga, Uh, informant, idukaran, may panggap iti book of common prayer. So, you can include your family or group of Episcopal friends or uh, uh, may met man na non-Episcopal uh, friends ko ba? So, that it will be more uh, exciting and totoong-totoo, no? 
and you can choose the ECW if you like, Skep if you like, Brotherhood Saint Andrew if you like. Basta you the the idea there is for you to uh, at least give instruction about the Book of Common Prayer to a certain group of people, and then in return uh, they will fill in the assessment form that I will be giving you to give to give them. So, for example, you have, you gathered 10 or 5 or 15, regardless of how many of them, I will be giving, uh, kung 5 sila, then I will be giving 5 assessment form. Pero, pinakamaliit na group yung 5. So, go uh, aim for a bigger number of audience. Okay? And, uh, that would be your midterms. And second, each of you will lead the liturgy of the word in your own church. Uh, kasi yung number one is uh, ititest natin yung skills ninyo doon sa pag-lead ng morning saka morning uh, and evening prayer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Doon sa number one, we will uh, listen to how you transmit the knowledge that you have learned in this course. Diba? Kasi in, pagbibigyan ng instruction about the Book of Common Prayer. But the second one is I will, uh, of course, assist you doon sa leading ng liturgy of the word uh, in your parish or your um, church. Mas, uh, kahit anong church yan, organized mission yan, a big parish or a medium parish, kung saan kayo naka, uh, where you're attending the mass. So, that would be your final, uh, final exam that serves as your final exam. And like the first one, I will be giving your, um, kung sino yung congregation who attended that day, assessment form uh, that you will give them. So, bibigay ko yung form sa inyo and then you will give them before you conduct the liturgy of the word. And maybe you need to give uh, explanation for uh, for what what is the content of the assessment form because I will be uh, discussing that with you. And uh, you need also the uh, support of your parish priest or your deacon or your graduate intern kung sino man yung naka-assign sa inyong mga churches. So, I hope that's clear. So, we don't have a uh, written test, but uh, you will be given this formative assessment uh, from that uh, because we, this is part of your formation in this course is skills development ito no paglilid ng uh, kung gaano ka ka knowledgeable about the uh, morning and evening prayer and of course the liturgy of the word. Kasi after this, uh, pag natapos nyo yung training dito sa ating theological program, uh, I will be giving the bishop information and of course uh, endorsement that the bishop can now give you um, the, what you call this one, the certificate so that you can now be helping your priests in instructing the members of your congregation and of course leading the morning and evening prayer in the liturgy of the word. Maski yung tatlong tulang, uh, pag uh, natutunan yung skill ng leading, at least we uh, we accomplish our goal. Kasi hindi lang ito academic uh, program, uh, but this is more of meron tayong vision na pag natapos mo tong course na to and so with the other subjects uh, you are now armed with the necessary um, things for you to use uh, so that you can uh, uh, help your priests okay required readings natin will be posted on our uh, facebook uh, page doon sa study group natin so from time to time check your uh, check our uh, fb page moving on Course objectives, so we have at least five. Uh, by the end of this course, at least uh, the learners, kayo yun, would be able to state the historical development of the Book of Common Prayer. So while we don't have the written test, but I hope that you will be remembering yung mga relevant dates and personalities, uh, especially, of course, Thomas Cranmer, when was the... Uh, first book of common prayer was used uh, in all that okay uh, second is that you would be able to list down the major content of the prayer book ano ba talaga ang content ng prayer book na yan now i i i suggested a link for you there to uh, look at uh, father matthews no dun sa kanyang four minute discussion of the content of the book of common prayer the american book of common prayer 
So, na-discuss naman niya for minutes kung ano yung content ng uh, Book of Common Prayer. Kasi, uh, very similar. Pag tinignan natin, uh, if we browse the uh, ECP Book of Common Prayer, sabi ko nga, uh, 80% if not 90% of the American Prayer Book ay kinupya po natin at yun yung ating to, to 2015 Book of Common Prayer. Okay, and then um, third is to classify the different forms of prayers that you will find in the Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> so we have the, di lang naman morning at saka evening prayer ang anjan. So meron tayong non day prayers, meron tayong complain, and all the other prayers. So at least alam nyo kung ano yung mga yan. And of course, when we speak of the Eucharistic prayer, si Padre Tabuwe, I'm sure, would discuss to you the different uh, Uh, Eucharistic prayers because we have five Eucharistic prayer A, B, C, D and uh, uh, we have uh, the number five Eucharistic prayer E so si Padre Tabuy would discuss that to you but at least uh, uh, alam nyo na meron tayong mga different forms of uh, the Eucharistic prayer Eucharistic prayer and of course the different forms of the uh, daily office and Um, state the arrangement number four you will be able to state the arrangement of the morning prayer and evening prayers in the Holy Eucharist at least uh, mentally alam nyo na kung ano yung order ng morning prayer so ano ba yung una ano yung susunod na ano na yung ganito ganyan so that's what we call no? yung at least meron kayong uh, mental picture of the order of morning and evening prayers at least familiar kayo kung hindi nyo memorize at this uh, you will be familiarized and so with the holy eucharist from the opening hymn up to the recessional and number five you will be able to demonstrate sufficient skills in leading the morning and evening prayers in the liturgy of the word kaya yun ay as i discuss yung mga requirement napaka important po talaga na as early as this time you should be imagining yourself leading the morning or evening prayer And of course, the liturgy of the word. You know, man, sa ibang mga may experience, yaka niya kaya yan. But for you, the first timers, uh, hindi pa kayo nabigyan ng chance to lead uh, the morning prayer or evening prayer in your parishes, then this is your chance to uh, develop that skill. Moving on. So, our lesson delivery and schedule. The lesson delivery, obviously, kasi tumataas na naman yung cases. Meron pa tayong Omicron ngayon. I was hoping na uh, magiging mas maluwang na sana uh, yung mga borders and all that so that those of you who are uh, uh, from mountain province, of course, those who are working in other provinces, sana meron tayong one Saturday na mag-in-person tayo. So, basta niligay na lang natin dyan, blended. So, we have this online or in-person. And I'm hoping that on January 18, baka pwede tayong mag-Zoom. Baka pwede tayong mag-virtual class. Uh, kayo po yung magsasuggest kung mag-start tayo ng 7 o'clock, more or less ganitong time, or earlier. So, uh, let me know that. Please comment on the comment section doon sa ating uh, Facebook page. Okay, so schedule, January 10, ngayon na to. So, Uh, we are now clarifying our lesson focus and requirements and others. And so, Guru, we can start uh, getting to know who is Thomas Cranmer. Uh, January 15, ito uh, yung sinasabi natin na wa ngayon, we'll talk about uh, Thomas Cranmer. But on January 15, we will be having um, al at least parang, uh, hindi naman siya thorough because we have uh, cannot discuss. Hindi kasi... Parang ang, kung online, limited lang talaga yung kaya ng utak natin, no? Kung in person, maybe we can go as far as three hours in one lecture setting. But since we're doing it online, 40 minutes to one hour lang. So, we'll see how it goes. But we're going to discuss, we'll be discussing the uh, the Anglicans in this common prayer. Kasi pag sinabi mong book of common prayer, ang tanong, which one? Kasi ang dami ng book of common prayer. So, kailangan po natin yan i- Uh, ayusin and of course uh, worship by the book. Kailan nagsimula na mayroong printed na libro na kinagamit sa worship? So we'll be going backwards sa medieval uh, church. Pag-uusapan natin po bago may prayer book ang Anglicans, ano yung mga book na kinagamit ng the Roman church before? Before we had our own uh, book of common prayer. January 18, we'll be uh, talking about the English Reformation. under Queen Elizabeth the first so yan nga, I'm hoping na meron tayong time to do it virtually so that mas exciting and you can ask questions and we can discuss if we have 
uh, things that needs uh, further clarification. And January 25, uh, hopefully we'll start looking at the content of the Book of Common Prayer kung pwede natin pagsabayin yung uh, American Book of Common Prayer and that with the ECP 2015 Book of Common Prayer. In February, ayan na, we'll be focusing on your skills development doon sa instructing people with uh, Book of Common Prayer. And kaya dapat alam nyo yung mga content kasi kung biglang may nagtanong doon sa instruction ninyo, at least uh, you uh, can be able to uh, at least answer this answer their questions. Okay? Resources. We... I haven't yet explored uh, more on electronic resources, pero uh, you can always uh, search naman, kasi nandiyan naman si Google, no? Si Apple Google. Uh, for um, information uh, about our history and about anything about Anglicanism, actually you can access that in the anglicancommunion.org. Uh, pag Inano mo yan, kinlik mo yung link na yan, lalabas yung, that is the official um, website of the Anglican Communion. And under that, you will have the menu. And if you are looking at uh, particular documents, you go to the, you click yung sa resources. And then, di ba, uh, sa resources, meron doon kung ano yung research mo. So you can type that Book of Common Prayer and there will be loads of information about the Book of Common Prayer that you can access talaga doon sa uh, alicancommunion.org under resources. Dito naman sa print, ito yung ating pinaka book. This one. It is the Oxford Guide to the Book of Common Prayer, a worldwide survey edited by Charles Hifling and Cynthia uh, Shattuck, or Shattuck um, under the University Press uh, 2006. So this book is actually a mini library. There are a lot of uh, very good resources and hoping that by next week, um, kung okay na yung ating uh, Kasi minsan na uh, nag-work from home yung ating, the person who is in charge of our uh, computer room. If uh, she would be reporting this week, I will start choosing at least, there are three chapters that I found very uh, um, interesting. And of course, uh, very informative for you and for me. Uh, siguro ano natin yun, uh, scan and then I will send it to you and again to be posted in our uh, FB page for your further reading because we don't have this luxury of time to be discussing this all of these resources uh, so it's your ano na lang um, panata nyo na lang to read this uh, when it becomes available in our FB group and another book uh, very old scholarship siya it's 1960s uh, book it's entitled Year of the Body uh, I have I have the copy of the book in my office I don't have it here at home but this book is very uh, useful when we talk about the English Reformation napaka detailed niya and there is this uh, one chapter that's really devoted with the discussion doon sa book of common prayer so doon sa chapter na yan uh, it's very interesting na yung use of the ring ay pinagdibatihan pala yun ng ilang, uh, ilang taon bago napasok dun sa Book of Common Prayer. And even the use of the uh, the sore place, napaka haba, I think it's more than 100 years, na diniscuss nila yun kung, kung bakit and what is the relevant of using the sore place when we were when we are to lead the uh, the offices, the daily offices, morning and uh evening prayers and so with when we are assisting don sa Holy Eucharist. So those are the information that is discussed in that particular chapter don sa Year of the Body. And of course, uh, meron din siyang magandang uh, narrative about the Elizabethanian settlement which is I think we should all be informed as Anglicans para alam natin yung at least uh, meron tayong alam about our history as uh, Anglicans. Okay, now, dito na, we'll discuss the uh, first Book of Common Prayer. Uh, so, the Book of Common Prayer, 
was passed by the lords of uh, by the house of lords uh, on january 15 1549 uh, through the act of uniformity so memorize the act of uniformity and if you have uh, time you can google the act of uniformity uh, slash british history or uh, or english reformation so that you can read uh, more information about the act of uniformity but for for our study this evening the act of uniformity as stated there was passed by the house of lords on january 15 1549 abolishing the latin mass in england kaya sabi ko kanina in one of our lecture nights or days we will um, have to talk about the medieval uh, church kasi doon sa medieval church talagang latin naman talaga yung language ng uh, service hindi naman talaga siya english okay so the only legal services throughout the country were to be those in english provided the new book of common uh provided in the new book of common prayer which was issued with the act so thanks be to god dun sa act of uniformity na yan no 1549 na abolish na yung um latin mass and it was replaced by uh english uh at yun nga uh yung sa provided sa book of common prayer the new book was approved by a committee of 13 clerics. I was trying to research kung sino yung 13 clerics but hindi ko wala akong mahanap. Okay, so uh, committee of 13 clergy. So walang lady. It was drafted of course by Thomas Cranmer who had been working privately on a new liturgy for several years and whose prose had been one of the glories of the English language ever since. Okay, so pag nag-google ka dun sa images Lahat, ganyan naman yung picture na lumalabas about uh, kung ano talaga yung itsura ni Thomas Cranmer. So, uh, ayan si Thomas Cranmer. Okay, we talk about uh, his biography uh, written by Mary Fairchild and it was updated uh, 2020. So, noong 2020, in-update ni Mary Fairchild yung biography ni Thomas Cranmer. So, thanks to this person who updated it for all of us. Okay, Thomas Cranmer was a leading reformer in the Church of England and the chief architect behind Anglicanism. Actually, itong pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, uh, nilagay ko po yan sa ating uh, Facebook page. O pwede nang uliting basahin later. And of course, there's another reading that I posted there. Uh, so, go over these readings. For tonight, we'll be discussing yung kay uh, Thomas Cranmer. His legacy, his life, his legacy and faith were entangled with those of several English monarchs. King Henry VIII in 1491 uh, to 1547 appointed Cranmer the first Protestant Archbishop of Canterbury. So in most um, church history books, ang title talaga ni Thomas Cranmer is Archb the first Protestant Archbishop of Canterbury. During the reign of King Edward VI, that's around 1537 to 1553, Cranmer completed his uh, most famous works, the Book of Common Prayer and the Book of Homilies. So, dalawa ang kinawa ni, dalawang libro, uh, yung personally authored by uh, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, uh, the Book of Common Prayer and of course, the Book of Homilies. Under Mary Tudor, see, si Mary Tudor was the uh, daughter of King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, who reigned from 1516 to 1558 and uh, Mary Tudor um, is of course or was of course a Roman Catholic um, he is not uh, pro-protestant actually pinagpapapatay niya later on will uh, yung mga protestant kasama dun si Cranmer so Cranmer was accused of heresy and treason in prison tried and finally burned at stake Pinasunog siya ni ano, Mary Theodore. Early life of uh, Thomas Cranmer. Uh, he was born in Aslockton, the second son of a low-ranking Nottinghamshire squire. And he underwent a long and rigorous education at Jesus College in Cambridge, where he was ordained to the priesthood and became a fellow by 1523. As a man of serious scholarship, Cranmer developed into an exceptional theologian. His desire to end papal authority in England moved him to begin meeting together with the other biblical scholars, including William Tyndale. What do you know about William Tyndale? Siya po yung architect ng uh, translation of the uh, Bible into English. So yun naman ang uh, notable about William Tyndale, yung translation ng 
uh, English Bible. So from other, uh, from Latin or the other uh, ancient language into English. And it was made available to all people, hindi lang yung sa mga clergy. So we'll encounter William Tyndale doon sa English Reformation. And of course, together with this other guy, and uh, to consider the uh, religious reforms of Martin Luther, so siguro naman familiar tayo kay Martin Luther, siya naman yung, uh, si Martin Luther is known as a Protestant reformer, and of course the architect of Lutheranism. Kung si uh, Thomas Cranmer doon ay yung architect ng uh, Anglicanism, si Martin Luther naman ay doon sa Lutheran, uh, Lutheranism. Uh, another, of course, another um, reformers taking place in Europe at the time. The group was given the name Little Germany. Okay? So, si na uh, Tyndale, si, Mar si Martin Luther, and of course, uh, Thomas Cranmer. So, Cranmer was pulled into the politics of, of the day and began a long career in service to English monarch royalty. So, the English monarchs. Because he believed in total obedience to his sovereign, he sometimes compromised his principles. But in the end, Cranmer's conviction would cost him his life. Yun nga, uh, kanina, doon sa pinapatay siya ni Mary Tudor. Okay, secret marriage. Uh, this guy pala, well, meron siyang history ng secret marriage. Before Cranmer was ordained the priest, he married a woman named Joan the daughter of a local tavern keeper. Within a year, she died in childbirth. Wow, naman. Later in 1532, Cranmer married Margaret Oshender, the niece of a Lutheran reformer. Uh, because ngayon nga, uh, they were close with Martin Luther. But because of the complicated political and religious conditions in England at the time, Cranmer was forced to keep his marriage a secret for many years. Oh, di ba? So, also din pala before ang secret marriage. Okay, Archbishop of Canterbury. In 1529, Cranmer became embroiled in the affairs of King Henry VIII. For a couple of years, the king had been seeking a way to, free, to be freed from his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, yan yung nanay ni Mary, so that he could marry Anne Boleyn. Uh, nanay naman ni Queen Elizabeth I, si Anne Boleyn. When King Henry VIII learned that Cranmer believed he had a right to divorce Catherine, the king summoned the theologian and ordained him to devote himself, uh, sorry, and ordered him to devote himself to writing up scripture back treatise in support of his right to a divorce. So, merong uh, personal interest the King Henry VIII kay Thomas Cranmer. As work on the treatise progressed, the aging Archbishop of Canterbury at that time passed away in August of 1532. Seizing the opportunity, King Henry appointed Cranmer the new Archbishop by March of the following year, so that would be 1533. Although he was reluctant to assume the office, Cranmer obliged the king, indeed as he was expected. He immediately annulled the king's marriage union. He annulled the king's marriage union with Catherine and a short time later performed the marriage of Henry to Anne Boleyn. Okay, so ayan ang participation kaagad-agad ni uh, kasi ngayon yung ini-expect ng king na gagawin niya. So, ba't pa siya ginawang archbishop? So, ang kanyang first act as an archbishop, di ba ironic yun, is the annulment of the king's marriage union with Catherine of Aragon. And a short time later, right away performed the marriage of Henry to Anne Boleyn. When I was in the, the U.S., there was this discussion of um, yung question. Ang, ang tanong is, uh, paano daw itreat yung mga marriage after divorce, a divorcee? Yung isang tao, yung isang Episcopalian, nag-divorce siya. And now, uh, he's again, for example, kinasal siya nung unang asawa niya. And then later, on nag-divorce, bumabalik na naman sa simbahan to ask for uh, the same right. Yung ano, so malaking tanong yon. But uh, going back to history, ito nga kay Cranmer, siya yung unang archbishop natin at yung kanyang unang ginawa ay annulment of the king's marriage to uh, Catherine of Aragon and then performing uh, kagad-agad yung kasal ni King Henry VIII with Anne, uh, with Anne Boleyn. So mukhang going back to our history and in relation to that question na how do we treat nga yung parang twice na siya. Uh, kinasal sa simbahan, nag-divorce, and then coming again uh, for the same uh, sacrament. So, 
kung ikaw yung pare, anong gagawin mo doon? Bibigay mo ulit yun. Ipapaano kung mag-divorce? But uh, of course, that is a malalim na katanungan yun that we will continue to uh, reflect on. Especially to clergy. Uh, doon mga sa mga issue ng when we speak, uh, actually, canonically or uh, legally matkitdi for as long as they are uh, uh, talagang annulled or divorced, talaga sila legally divorced or legally annulled, then of course, there are no reason. Siguro doon sa theology na lang at saka doon sa ibang aspeto ng ating buhay, doon ang tanong. Uh, but uh, again, uh, going back to this history, yun ang first act ng ating first Archbishop, the annulment of marriage, and of course, kinasal yung si King Henry VIII in Anbulin. Cranmer believed in royal absolutism, that the king was God's chosen instrument to lead his nation in church. Often during King Henry VIII's reign, Cranmer, who felt it was his duty to be the king, was forced to support policies and perform actions that he did not personally approve. That's the other side of the story. As Archbishop of the Church of England, Cranmer grew increasingly more Protestant in theology. So increasingly naging Protestant, yung kanyang theology, in cooperation with Thomas Cromwell, that is another Anglican divine, will uh, study him, uh, you will study Thomas Cromwell and uh, the English history. He promoted the publication of an English Bible, yeah, together with uh, yon kay uh, Tindale and had it put to use in parish churches. So, yun naman ang participation niya. Although he rejected the traditional Roman Catholic belief in transubstantiation, theology na to, pinag-uusapan, Cranmer held to the doctrine of the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. So, we'll be discussing this doon sa theology part ng ating uh, study of the Book of Common Prayer. So, yes, we will study yung... Uh, what is transubstantiation? Ano yung transubstantiation na Roman Catholic theology doon sa Eucharist versus yung uh, theology of real presence um, that is introduced by Cranmer. So those are the things that we will be discussing when we come to the uh, theology part of the study of the Book of Common Prayer. With the death of Henry VIII in 1547, his young son Edward, who was only nine at the time, ascended the throne of England, Edward VI. Thus, Cranmer was able to exercise considerable influence over the king's education and spiritual development. So, naging influential siya dun sa buhay ni uh, Edward VI. He also took the lead role in directing doctrinal matters in reconstructing worship in the Church of England. So, yun nga. So, sinasabi natin, pag book of common prayer, hindi lang siya book for prayers, but also it contains the basic uh, tenets of our beliefs as uh, Anglicans. Under Edward VI, Cranmer became the leading organizer of the English Reformation and founder of Anglicanism. His Book of Common Prayer was revised in 1552 to a decidedly more Protestant nature. So, siguro marami pang mga amoy uh, Roman Catholic pa. So, hindi siya masyadong Protestant, no? So, it has to be revised. It eventually developed into the official liturgical service book of the Church of England and the fullest expression of faith and identity of the Anglican Church. Ayan. Cranmer also wrote a creed for the Church, known as the 42 Articles of Religion, later called the 39 Articles, which set forth the doctrinal position of the Church of England. So when you read the 1979 Book of Common Prayer, and the dyan sa later pages ng Book of Common Prayer. So, pad... Uh, Padaanan tayo, no? Uh, we will discuss that uh, briefly when we come to that part of discussing the uh, 39 um, articles. Nasa Book of Common Prayer yan. So, you start browsing and you will find this at the uh, end of the 1979 Book of Common Prayer and so with the 2015 ECP Book of Common Prayer. Okay, he published his Book of Homilies requiring the clergy to emphasize reform doctrines in their sermons including the supremacy and sufficiency of scripture and justification by faith alone. So note that Cranmer was in contact with Martin Luther, uh, William Tyndale, and the other uh, Protestant reformers, uh, sina, uh, yung iba, sina John Calvin. Ano? So pinag-uusapan during that time yung, uh, yung scripture, uh, 
Kaya nga pag sinasabi natin, what is the basis of Christian or uh, of Anglican uh, belief? Sinasabi natin na meron tayong tatlo, yung three legs tall ng ating uh, uh, faith, ating belief. So number one dyan is the scripture, and then of course tradition and reason. Of course this time, the our um, American friends, American uh, theologians, and not only Americans, but there are also British uh, theologians and African theologians, were also um, tinadagdagan yung three na yan. So we have the scripture or the Bible, You have tradition, reason, and now there are, of course, including culture and experience. So, nagiging five na yung three legs stool na yan. But originally, during the uh, during this time, dito sa dinidiscuss natin, is uh, pinag-uusapan muna yung supremacy of the scripture. So, lahat ng ating faith, ibig sabihin, if it's not, kung uh, yung ating belief, kung ano yung pinapaniwala natin, and if it's not uh, supported by scripture, ay walang ano yun. Okay? Uh, in other words, it's irrelevant. So, uh, sa Anglicanism, number one sa atin yan. Pag meron tayong doctrinal uh, issue, meron tayong talks about our faith, kinukonsult muna natin kung meron yang support sa scripture. So, yan kasi dito sa time nila Cranmer, is yun nga, uh, doon sa kanyang book of homilies, He instructed his clergy to put scripture above all other things and of course yung justification by faith alone that we can be saved by faith and kasi yung debate noon is uh, which can save a, a believer yung kanyang faith o yung kanyang gawa so in even the scriptures um, merong debate pero sabi ni James if we read the book of James sabi niya doon faith without works is dead But for the time at this, uh, during dito sa time ni na Cranmer, uh, yun ang kanyang instruction. No? The sufficiency of the, of the scripture and the justification by faith alone. In addition, he removed celibacy. Ayan pa yung mga ginawa ni Cranmer. He removed celibacy as a requirement for the priesthood and opened the communion cup to lay people. So, ang dami talagang changes doon sa um, original teachings of the, the Roman Church, no? So, sa Roman Church kasi may silibas si doon eh. Uh, and of course, yung cup is reserved for the clergy. Pero si Cranmer, yun, inalis niya yung uh, lifted that uh, the vow of silibasi and of course, uh, the communion cup is now available to lay people. Kaya yung ating Anglican practice sa ating Eucharist, of course, we deliver communion in both kinds. So, you have the bread and of course, the wine. Hindi lang yung priest lang yung umiinom sa wine. So, thanks to Apo Cranmer. Okay, uh, what happened? In the summer of 1553, when Catholic uh, Queen Mary I, it was Mary Tudor, ang bansag sa kanya ay uh, Bloody Mary. Uh, siya ay maka-Roman, di ba? So, ayaw niya yung mga Protestant. Uh, when he began her reign, Cranmer's good fortune was reversed. So, kung uh, very influential si Cranmer doon sa time ni uh, Edward VI, from King Henry to Edward VI, nung naupo si uh, Queen Mary, na-reverse na yung kanyang fortune. Mary abolished the use of the Book of Common Prayer, restored medieval Catholic services, and accused all Protestant leaders who remained in England at the time of heresy Uh, at the time of heresy and treason. Mabibigat na kaso yan, no? And burning at stake yung uh, punishment. Under her relentless anti-Protestant campaign, campaign, Cranmer was imprisoned, tried of treason and heresy, declared guilty and excommunicated. A tragic, la, tragic life of Thomas Cranmer. After spending nearly two years in prison and enduring a long and tedious trial, Cranmer grew weary and depressed. He became convinced that he should submit to the queen and renounce his reformed beliefs. Hoping to escape execution, Cranmer signed confession stating, So meron siyang ginawa. He signed his conf I confess and believe in one holy Catholic visible church. I recognize that the supreme head upon earth, the Bishop of Rome, Pope and Vicar of Christ, to whom all faith faithful are bound subjects. But the effort was useless. So akala niya, yung gagawin niya yun, Uh, he would be uh, released from prison, but did it? What did it happen? Cranmer would still be burned at stake. 
on the day of his death, he renounced his earlier confessions, kasi mamamatay din lang naman siya, saying, I came to the great thing that troubleth my conscience more than any other thing that I ever said or did in my life. All such bills which I have written or signed with my own hand are untrue. So, um, can't, eh, ano yung earlier confession niya dun sa ano. Cranmer continued, and, and as for the Pope, I refuse him as Christ's enemy and antichrist, with all his false doctrine. And as for the Pope, I refuse him as Christ's enemy and antichrist, with all his false doctrine. And as for the sacrament, ayan, uh, his speech siya, Miss Miss Cranmer was dragged away to be burned alive. As the flames leaped around his feet, Cranmer stretched down his right hand, the hand that he had signed the confessions, into the fire and said, This hand hath offended. Nagbasol dito yung ima, so iso ito mo na nga mauram. He held it there until it had burned to a stump. As the flames engulfed him, Cranmer prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He died a martyr's death on March 21, 1556 in Oxford. So, ayun, ang uh, masalimuot na buhay ni Thomas Cranmer. But uh, his contribution uh, to Anglicanism, I affirm that he is really the uh, architect of Anglicanism because yun nga sa kanyang trabaho, sa Book of Common Prayer, and with all the uh, reform, reforms doon sa practices of the church, uh, traditional practices of the church as well as the teachings or doctrines of the church um, okay the uncommon legacy two years after Cranmer's death Elizabeth I ito naman yung anak ni King Henry VIII with uh, Anne Boleyn the Elizabeth I no? Queen Elizabeth I in 1553 to 1603 ascended the throne of England note that the the Ma matagal nag uh, rena itong si Queen Elizabeth I known as the Virgin Queen uh, 1553 to 1603 ascended the throne of England she reinstated Cranmer's Book of Common Prayer both in alang and reset the church back on its protestant course perhaps more than any of his works the Book of Common Prayer reveals Cranmer's outstanding theological judgment and skillful use of English not only has it become a classic of English literature but it also contains some of the most beautiful prayers in uh, liturgies and Christendom. Of course, Cranmer wrote the Book of Common Prayer for the whole nation. Take note of that, class. Cranmer wrote the Book of Common Prayer for the whole nation. So sa atin yan, perhaps we see the book as a book of worship initially. But when we tie the history of the Book of Common Prayer with the history, with the English Reformation, um, uh, that book is actually part of their history. It's part of their uh, nationalist uh, nationalism. Uh, kakabit siya ng kanilang uh, nationalism, the history of their, when was their nationalism, uh, nakakabit yung uh, Book of Common Prayer doon. So, nagiging, uh, hindi lang Book of Worship sa kanila yung Book of Common Prayer, but that's part of their um, uh, history. He envisioned both clergy and lay people in all classes of society holding the book in hand, hearing and reading it for spiritual nourishment and worship. Napakaganda po, di ba? Um, hearing and reading it for spiritual spiritual nourishment and worship. So, yun naman talaga. So, as far as the members of the Anglican Communion is concerned at present, para sa akin ay natupad po yung vision ni Thomas Cranmer, ni Archbishop Cranmer. Na paghawak natin yung libro, yeah, uh, at ginagamit natin as part of our daily uh, worship uh, it becomes uh, becomes part of our spiritual nourishment really and of course uh, our worship and indeed that is what has provided for millions of Christians for more than four, century, four centuries kasama po tayo dun okay uh, this would be our next lesson comes uh tingnan nyo na lang yung ating schedule uh, this is uh, January 13 Anglicans and Corn Prayer and Worship by the Book we'll be uh, talking about that on our next uh, video lecture your assignment is to continue to browse the whole Book of Common Prayer whatever you have the 1979 or the 2015 
Uh, and of course, you again reread, kung hindi nyo pa nabasa yung, sec yung reading, uh, reading 2 that I posted in, your, in our uh, FB page. Um, ito yung title lang ating uh, FB page, kung hindi, mayroon pang hindi naka-access sa inyo. is a Book of Common Prayer Study Group. So, good evening. Um, this is enough for tonight. We will continue in our next uh, meeting. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have questions and clarifications regarding the requirement, regarding anything that we that I have talked about tonight, feel free to uh, send me a private message or you comment on the comment section down sa ating FB page. Again, good evening and um, have a good night.